So a couple weeks back when everyone was in Taiwan for Computex, Kyle tweeted a picture of he and his wife and it was raining and they didn't have umbrellas. And I, I tweeted a snarky response back because they should be very well aware that they need umbrellas in Taiwan in early June because they've been going there for Computex for like seven plus years, I think. But then Jay, also known as Jay's Two Cents, responded to my tweet and said, oh, I really like the new I don't give a f version of Paul. And I was like, all right, that's kind of new, but maybe I should go with this. Let's, let's try this new attitude out for a little bit. To that end. Oh, Jesus. Oh God. <sighs> this is the brand new Asus ROG Swift PG35V ultra wide gaming monitor, G-Sync ultimate support and 200 Hertz refresh rates. It is going to cost a lot, about $2,500 according to Asus. Asus said that they really only sent a couple of these out for review to me and Linus Tech Tips. So just wanted to point out that by comparison, your monitor is horrible. I have this and you don't, so suck it. Excellent. Cooler Masters SF Series fans feature addressable RGB LEDs and a square design to maximize fan mount coverage and generate high pressure airflow. Available in standard 120mm size as the SF120P, as well as the dual fan 240mm option in the SF240P ARGB. Cooler Master has integrated multiple layers of noise reduction technology and an optimized fan blade design into this series, so click the sponsor link in the description to learn more. It's a heavy monitor too. So this is an ultra wide monitor, very popular for gaming. The ultra wide monitors are. I, I really like this ultra wide size, the form factor, just cause it gives you more wrap around. Having a slight curvature is also nice. This has 1800 R curvature. It's 35 inches measured diagonally from corner, corner to corner. And the resolution is 3440 by 1440, which is a good resolution that is significantly better than 1080 or ultra wide 1080, but still fewer pixels than 4K, which means you can get higher frame rates or more FPS with uh, less power from your graphics card. That's sort of a general description, but it does have external RGB. RGB lighting, uh, one in this display right here, and then it's got the downward projecting RGB ROG logo. Both of those can be controlled via the ASUS Aura software. Also, one more ROG logo right there on top of the stand. If you're special like me and you have this monitor, you also get a big old box of accessories, starting with a Batarang, or no, this is actually an additional panel you can put on the back. After you get everything wired up with your cables, you want it to look pretty, so that is a cover. I'll show you how that goes on in just a second. We have some paperwork also to confirm how awesome I am for having this monitor. I am an Asus VIP. This is just to notify me of that. And then we have also, uh, I am part of the Elite Republic of Gamers community now, which has tons of perks as as outlined in this. This also has a sort of a quick start guide as well as safety info. You get this squishy pouch stash bag for storing your mustaches. Uh, also in that is these ROG logos. And I've never actually had an Asus ROG monitor that has a downward firing thing, but it doesn't come pre-installed. So that pops on the back and then the light shines through this. So you can swap that out for a different ROG pattern if you want to, or they provide you with some blanks so you can make your own. Also included in the box is this color calibration testing report because this monitor actually has really good color reproduction. Uh, it has 1000 nits of brightness, 90% of the DCI P3 color space can be represented. So that's uh, the 10 billion colors, 10 bit gamut, although it can accept a 12 bit input signal and then uh, Delta E less than two color calibrations. So they're basically guaranteeing a very high level of color accuracy out of the box because they individually calibrate each monitor before it ships from the factory. I tend to be critical of monitors when it comes to stands because I think a monitor should either ship with a good stand or have a vase mount. Ideally, it should have both. This monitor does have both, which includes uh, a nice stand, but also these standoffs because it does have a standard vase mount, but it's recessed. So you'll need these standoffs in order to use that standard vase mount. So if you do decide to put it on a swing arm or wall mounted or something like that, you do have support for that. Good job Asus, including those in the package. It does have a fairly large external power brick. And in fact, this monitor has three internal cooling fans as well that Asus has done some work to make sure that they ramp up and down at the right speed to make sure things are staying cool while also minimizing the amounts of uh, noise that's generated. Big power brick, so you're gonna need to find a spot for that. The plus side of having an external power brick is that if it fails or something like that, you can replace it without having to replace the entire monitor. And they do include both sides of the cable, so that's nice too. And last 
lastly, we have three included cables. An HDMI, and it can do up to 100 hertz at full resolution via HDMI. DisplayPort, where you can get up to 200 hertz. So if you're gaming, you want to be connecting via DisplayPort, ideally to an NVIDIA graphics card. And then finally, there is a USB extension because it does have an integrated USB hub. Not just a USB hub, though. They have also integrated a sound card, basically, into this monitor. It has an integrated ESS ES9118 headphone amplifier that supports audio output at up to 24 bit 192 kilohertz, which means that yes, you can plug into the 3.5 millimeter jack on this monitor and still get good sound. And that also allows you the convenience of connecting up via HDMI and just having the single cable for sound. Just bear in mind, if you're doing HDMI and going through the headphone jack, you're limited to 16 bit 48 kilohertz. If you really want to fully make use of the integrated sound card, you want to connect via USB. I've laid the monitor flat here just for a second so we can handle a few things. There's a Kensington lock. I always like to point that out. And uh, back here we have some designs, some, you know, apart from the lighting, which I'm gonna plug in in just a second and show you. I mean, this really cool aesthetic design on the back of your monitor. And some of you might be thinking, an aesthetic design on the back of the monitor, I'm never gonna see that. But those of us who own a monitor of this caliber and quality know that it really is what sets it apart from the rest uh, that's available. And, you know, just gives you that feeling of superiority. Back here, you have the IO. There's an HDMI and a display port out. And then there's the uh, USB input as a couple. USB 3.0 ports back there. It's pretty much all apart from connecting up power as well And then you can route those cables back through the stand where there's a little port that uh, helps keep your cable management nice and tidy Speaking of the stand down here at the bottom. We haven't installed the ROG logo uh, We're just going with the default one for now and uh, just been routing the cables up so that we can plug stuff in and do some Testing with this monitor also wanted to show you guys how this panel pops on just like this and look look how much cleaner that is all of you guys probably don't have this feature on your monitor, which is why this one is better. You actually can put the uh, downward firing logo on while you're installing the monitor's base and stand, which is what you're supposed to do. But also, I want to point out that there's a little cap over the lens here that you're supposed to remove somehow. Somehow. Oh, there we go. Now, normally I don't spend too much time on gratuitous, sexy B-roll footage in my videos, but for this monitor, hey, why not make an exception? So a few things you might notice physically about this monitor. One is that Asus is still calling monitors bezel-less, even though it has clearly about a quarter inch bezel around the entire outside. I guess that's a trend that's just gonna continue, but I just wanna point out this is not an edge-to-edge -edge screen, and I don't know why they're trying to tell you that it is. The stand, apart from having those fancy chrome accents as well as the downward firing LED, does have height, tilt, and swivel adjustment, which is just about all you can expect for an ultra wide. And I will also note that it doesn't cost $1,000 extra. The only other things physically about this monitor I wanted to point out are that the controls are sort of tucked around the back right side and there is a joystick to allow you to navigate through them, which is pretty convenient. They're pretty easy to get to and not too difficult to navigate through the menus with. And then I wanted to point out that for all the extra effort that Asus went through to give you a better sound solution for this, and I have been testing it and it does sound better. I can't really show you guys that because you're listening to it through your own sound devices, but it does sound better though if you plug in via USB and go uh, via the included ESS amplifier. But if they really wanted people to use this, they should have repositioned the headphone jack. It's still positioned back there with all of the video in and outs, which means that if you put this cover on, you can't get at it. Moving on to some testing though, and for the sake of comparison, I've set this up side by side with my LG monitor, which is the 34 GK 950F, which is a 144 Hertz monitor. It's 34 inches rather than 35 inches. So just slightly smaller, but the same resolution, 3440 by 1440. It supports FreeSync too, as well as HDR 400, so the lesser variant of the HDR 1000 that the ASUS monitor supports. And when it comes to setting up the PG35V, it will run at 180 hertz max out of the box. So you do need to jump into the menu and go to the overclocking function, which is the first thing on there to turn on 200 hertz mode to get full range of one to 200 hertz G-Sync support, which is a nice feature, especially if you dip into the really low frame rates, uh, it supports down to one hertz refresh, which would be awkward, but good to have the full spectrum supported there. It does also have a blue light filter built in, levels zero through four supported. And then there's some game visual modes that you can access if you're not in HDR mode. Uh, racing mode will get you the fastest response time. Uh, I did most of my testing in sRGB except for my click to response time that I'll get to in just a second. Also, if you go in the image
image menu, you'll find an overdrive function. And one of the things that I noticed as I was doing side-by-side -side testing was some more noticeable ghosting with the Asus monitor as compared to the LG. They're supposed to have similar pixel response times in the four millisecond range, uh, but I did notice when the Asus monitor had overdrive off, there was noticeable ghosting. You can turn overdrive more mode to normal or extreme. Normal did reduce that ghosting a bit, so that's probably the mode I would play in. When we went to extreme though, it went a little bit too far and it caused a corona effect, which is kind of the inverse ghosting that hopefully you can see in some of these slow-mo frames. All that is to say though, from a direct panel to panel comparison, there's definitely a little bit worse ghosting on the Asus than on the LG, which is kind of disappointing because the LG monitor is currently available for a little bit less than $1,000, which is a lot less than the about $2,500 expected retail price of the Asus. Another function available in the menus is the variable backlight. It has a 512 zone backlight with full area local dimming. Since it's a VA panel that it's using, it does still need a backlight and 512 zone is just about as good as you can get unless you go all the way to OLED. That said, you can adjust how fast or slow those zones actually light up or dim down. But I did notice some haloing happening, which is one of the negative sides of a full area local dimming backlight like this one. And that just means that when there's extremely high contrast, uh, you might see certain areas of the screen light up because you can actually see the backlight lighting up. So if you're looking at a very dark image with small points of light, you might see halos around them. I was running through the LG Chess 4K demo, uh, which is supposed to call this out a little bit more. Fortunately, when watching video or playing games, this effect is really not very noticeable. I had to sort of tease it out by setting the background to gray and moving a window around. And here you can really see when the backlights light up and dim. But again, in practice, it wasn't that noticeable, just something that some people who are prickier about their displays, especially if you're spending 2,500 bucks on one, might notice. Just rounding out, going down the menu, there's a game plus menu that allows you to put a crosshair or a timer or a FPS counter overlay on the screen. Asus has been doing that for a while. It is available in this monitor too. And then if you go into the system setup menu, you can go to the light in motion or a sync or, or RGB functions. And those are what's gonna allow you to manually control the LED that's on the back of the monitor, the downward firing LED that lights up the desk underneath the monitor stand. And uh, you can actually set those to specific colors. There's a few basic effects that are available in there, or you can just switch over to aura sync mode. In which case, if you have the USB plugged in, you can use the aura sync software to synchronize everything up with your computer and the RGB LEDs that you no doubt have installed there. Last thing I wanted to mention here is that in the setup menu, you can go and tell it whether it's gonna use the HDMI pass-through with the integrated audio just as is, which will get you lower sound quality, or you can plug in via the USB, have it recognize it as a sound device on your system, then switch over to using it that way. I would recommend that if you are planning on passing your audio through the monitor because it definitely does improve the audio quality. Again, it's subjective. I can't really show you guys that because it's just me listening to the headphones, but uh, yes, that is definitely the way to go. Speaking of tests that I can't really show you because you guys may or may not be actually using HDR monitors and this isn't going to be an HDR video anyway, is display HDR 1000 support. From everyone who I've spoken to, and I have very limited experience with HDR, getting the brightness up as high as you can is very important. And a thousand nits of brightness is the on the high end, on the actually very high end when it comes to a monitor. Most monitors you'll see are down in the 250 to 400 range. That is what allows it to hit that display HDR 1000 spec. That's also what gives it the G-Sync ultimate support because that's like G-Sync with extra sauce, which is basically HDR support and HDR 1000. And here's where I definitely noticed an improvement with the Asus monitor compared to the LG. And that's simply due to the high dynamic range being worse on the LG. I noticed a lot more colors being washed out. I was using Austin Evans iPhone 10 video, which is available in HDR 4K on YouTube. And you can just see a lot more normal gradation of tones on the Asus monitor. I, saw, I noticed things were a lot more washed out on the LG. So when it comes to HDR support, I think that's definitely an area where this monitor shines. I'm still developing my monitor testing techniques, but I wanted to do a click to response time test using a high frame rate recording with the camera that I have, which can go up to 180 frames per second. So basically in my admittedly limited tests, the Asus monitor took about 23 frames to actually show a response versus the LG, which took about 14 frames to show response. That's out of 180 frames total it was recording per second. So according to my calculations, that's about uh, 80 milliseconds of input lag on the LG and about 120 or 125 milliseconds of input lag on the Asus. So the LG was a little bit faster in that respect as well. Finally, we just did some live gameplay testing. I had Joe test out Apex Legends because you can actually play it in ultra wide, although it is stretched at the edges. But he noticed uh, a lot more smoothness even compared going from the 144 hertz from the LG to the 200 
200 hertz for the Asus, and he was going to win both matches. He won the match he played originally on the LG monitor, and uh, that just goes to show more frames obviously makes you a better gamer. And then I think he was going to win the one that he was playing on the Asus monitor too, except for the system froze up. And I have no idea if that was because I have the new Windows 1903 update or something to do with HDR or the dual monitors or if Arctic Panther just decided to take a crap on me. I'm not sure, but it's definitely worth repeating that playing 200 hertz G-Sync is a buttery smooth gaming experience, especially for an FPS game. I did a little bit of gaming too. I played some Overwatch, which is kind of silly because it doesn't support ultra wide unless you crop it, which is you don't want to do anyway. But still, even if you're playing a 16 by nine game, you're still taking advantage of the high refresh rate and everything. So I would say still worth playing. Um, although Metro was probably made a little bit more sense because I could actually play that in ultra wide. Let me try to sum up this video for you guys if I can. This monitor is absolutely awesome for gaming and uh, hopefully some of my testing has brought that across to you. Is it worth the price that Asus is charging for it right at launch of about $2,500 US? Uh, probably not for most people just because that's very expensive. That's a lot more than most people I think spend on a monitor, but I think there is a niche of people with the money who've been waiting for this uh, confluence of features, that being the form factor, ultra wide, the size, the resolution, the super high refresh rate at 200 hertz with G-Sync, as well as the color ac accuracy, um, which I don't think we've really seen in a monitor of this caliber. Now, I think what Asus maybe should have done is cut down on some of the extra features of this monitor, like all the RGB stuff on the back, the housing, that stuff looks really cool. Let's be honest, it makes me feel happy a little bit, but ultimately, in most most situations it's going to be facing the wall like it is right here and you're never going to see it again. Same goes for having a artfully designed stand with the downward firing LED logo. I mean sure monitor stands are very expensive these days and can sell for upwards of a thousand dollars or so I've heard but I feel like Asus could have cut back on some of that stuff maybe not worried about the integrated audio and cut down on the price and made it a little bit more reasonable for some people and who knows maybe Asus will make a slightly cut down version of this monitor that uses the panel technology but remove some of that other stuff and makes the price a little bit less, who knows. My negatives for this monitor are definitely going to be uh, the haloing that's happening from the backlight, the ghosting that's happening. Uh, it wasn't really bad ghosting, I wanna point that out. It's only go bad ghosting because I'm comparing it to this LG monitor that has really next to no ghosting. And then I think the input lag could be improved a bit as well. But overall, the gaming experience on this monitor is absolutely amazing. Uh, same goes for media playback. So if you guys are looking for a monitor and you've got the money, definitely consider this one. But I would keep an eye out as well for alternatives that might have a very similar set of features as this Asus monitor that maybe aren't the over-the-top super premium RG with lots of RGB LEDs and everything that uh, tends to cost a little bit more. I'm hoping that this technology will be more accessible for more people in the future and that way I won't have to make videos like this where I simply gloat and point out to you guys that I have this and you don't. But for now, I guess that's all I can do. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button. Uh, if you enjoyed my slightly different take on an approach, then you know, let me know that in the comments section below as well. And we'll see you guys in the next video.